cyberspace is undergoing a rapid change. And many of the changes we can see are frankly disturbing. The worldwide rise of censorship, surveillance, and even the militarization of what we call cyberspace are early warning signs we need to take seriously. And to get a clearer sense of what these early warning signs are and what they mean for the future of cyberspace, we traveled to the Citizen Lab in Toronto. Headed by Ron Diebert, the Citizen Lab has been at the forefront of scanning the forces that are currently shaping the politics of cyberspace. And to fully grasp the pivotal issues surrounding cyberspace, global security and human rights today, researchers at the Citizen Lab point to three major social forces. The first concerns the profound change in communications technologies themselves. The second concerns the growing role of the state in cyberspace. And the third points to the changing demographics of cyberspace. It is the confluence of these three broad developments happening right now that have a dramatic impact on human rights, liberal democracy and freedom. So let's see what Ron Diebert has to say about the first of these developments. The question over the changes in communications technologies and why they are so profound. Well, I think that we're going through easily the most profound change in communications in all of human history in a very abbreviated period of time. So if you look at the development of the alphabet, printing press, all the great technological revolutions of the past, uh, those typically took many generations to unfold and um, their impacts, although very significant, were uh, mostly limited to certain regions of the world. Here we have a uh, uh, remarkable shift in communications in a very short period of time. Uh, I think the most significant changes have occurred really within the last 10 years and they're fundamentally changing how we relate to each other, most importantly, how we relate to information about our own uh, activities, our thoughts, our habits, our social relationships. We're turning our lives essentially inside out, all within a very short period of time, and that has huge repercussions. What are these repercussions? Well, I think first and foremost is that <clears throat> most people today, uh, and they're just about everyone in the world is connected to the internet in some fashion today, is uh, taking data that used to be in their desktops, in their filing cabinets, behind closed doors, even in their minds, and they're now entrusting that information to third parties. Most of those third parties are private companies, so they're collecting this information for business purposes. Uh, there are often companies that are headquartered in jurisdictions other than the ones that the consumers of that technology are citizens of. Um, and this includes information that we're conscious of, like the emails we send, documents that we upload to Google Docs, etc. but also information that we're not conscious of, uh, but that follows us around like a digital trail. The best example is your mobile device. Even when you're not using it, it's emitting a pulse every few seconds as an electronic beacon looking for the nearest cell phone tower or Wi-Fi router. And within that beacon is a lot of information about the make and model of the phone, uh, the fact that it's your phone because your name is attached to the operating system, uh, data that's connected to the device itself, an IMEI number, um, and the geolocation of the phone, where you are in space and time. Um, essentially, we're carrying around with us these very powerful tracking devices that emit information about our habits, our movements, our communications that do not just evaporate. They sit on the servers of the companies that own and operate the infrastructure that we depend on. And that's just the mobile phone. Most of us have dozens of applications on our phones that do more or less the same thing. And we all use other devices beyond our mobile phones, like computers, laptops and tablets. Each of them can give permission to access our communications, 
our emails, our social networks, even our files and photographs. And with what many people now call the Internet of Things, this phenomenon is growing exponentially, as ever more devices, now estimated to be over 50 billion worldwide, are connected to each other and to the Internet. We are leaving around us this digital exhaust that contains precise information about our lives and about our habits. Trillions of data points that now form a new ethereal layer around the planet that is growing in all directions. This new development, according to Ron Diebert, is precisely why it is important for us as citizens to look beneath the surface of the screens in front of us. Looking beneath the surface of the technological environment around us, I think, is an essential civic virtue today is the way I would describe it and uh, I would explain it in the following way uh, never as never before in human history are we so dependent on technology um, for the reasons that I explained about our mobile devices internet connected devices uh, something like 50 billion devices now are connected to the internet our fridges our toasters uh, when we step onto an airplane internet enabled, uh, there are tracking systems that follow us through uh, transportation systems, um, even our refrigerators monitor what we're eating, uh, our, our nutrition habits and so on. And a lot of this information is shared not only with each other but with companies that, uh, that provide these services to us usually through some kind of proprietary algorithm or code. Knowing what goes on beneath the surface of all of that is an essential element of citizenship today because uh, we're dependent on these technologies and how they are structured can influence our choices as citizens, what we do with our lives, what are the opportunities for us. If it's hidden from view from us, then we're uh, acting with only partial information or on the basis of ignorance. Uh, lifting the lid on the technological environment around us is essential for the protection of liberty and freedom, uh, free expression and the exercise of human rights today. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to do that for most people. Um, most people click I accept without reading the terms of service, let alone unpacking the software itself and understanding how the code works. But to me, this is something that uh, is going to have to be at the bedrock of liberal democracy if liberal democracy is going to survive into the future.